So, many have been outspoken about the cuts made to the fire department this year. Why or why not do you believe they were necessary? Okay. I'm going to answer your question this way. Um, the decision uh, that impacted the fire department was pretty much laid, made at the last minute in the budget process. It was something that surfaced towards the end of the budget process. Um, and I don't think it was well thought out. I think um, that it has the potential to cost more money than any savings that may have been envisioned. We're already seeing that play out um, with this uh, legal proceeding that's going on between the union and the city. First thing that everyone has to remember is um, we have legal binding agreements with each one of the bargaining units. The fire department is one of them. Um, in on the signature page in the fire department contract, it speaks to the fact that everything, all the provisions in the contract, including any side agreements, will remain in effect until a new contract is negotiated. So at the end of that, of the current contract, which happened uh, about a few months ago when city is supposedly has embarked on negotiations, um, the language in that contract says that all of the provisions contained in the contract will remain in, in effect until the next contract is agreed to by both parties. That takes a negotiation process, so in addition to that we have the Taylor Laws in, the New, in New York State which basically say the same thing as language that's in the contract. Uh, everything stays in place until um, a new contract is agreed to by both parties. So you have a legal binding contract. Um, I know there's been some thought on the part of some people that uh, because the contract expired and all those provisions go away and therefore they don't have to live with minimum staffing um, the, um, and, and, and those impacts. So the council comes along, they eliminate 10 positions over last year's levels. Um, and I really think that because it wasn't a well thought out decision, it really was, um, that wasn't re a responsible thing to do, knowing full well that um, they would potentially end up in the position they're in now where there's a temporary restraining order which requires um, the minimum staffing to be maintained. It's eating up overtime. They did not budget money to pay for that overtime. So it's kind of like they're gambling with our future and with our money because this decision was made, but no money was put into the budget to pay for what everyone could guess, could pretty much say, this is what's going to happen. You can look at other communities, you can look at what, what usually happens, and, you know, here, here we are in a legal proceeding. The sad part is, is uh, if we sat at the negotiating table and we tried to work through this, uh, we could have maybe accomplished something without having to go through the court system and have all those additional costs. Um, when I say we, the city could have. Because uh, where we are right now is we have this legal proceeding. We have a situation where minimum staffing has to be maintained. Uh, you know, any, any comment to the fact that everything's working fine now, well, that's, that's great if someone thinks that everything's working fine as a result of the budget decision, but the city's in a position where they have to maintain staffing levels at the same level as we had last year leading up to this decision. So the true impacts in terms of uh, uh, the fire department's ability to respond, we haven't seen that yet. We really haven't felt that yet. We felt that maybe in ways where 
because you're working with less people to maintain the staffing levels, uh, it, you know, maybe uh, people, people are working more hours, people get tired, you might see uh, people end up getting injured as a result of that. But the coverage is pretty much still there because there's a restraining order that says the city has to maintain that 16-man minimum. So what have we accomplished by doing this? They reduced the number of firefighters by 10 over last year's number. Uh, it set into place a legal process which uh, was pursued by the fire department uh, and the city is a party to. And I, I really believe that uh, and in all likelihood at the end of the process when the judge makes the decision he's likely to say, okay, everybody, this is what you have to do. Maintain some level of minimum staffing and sit down at the table and work it out, negotiate it out. That's typically what has happened in other communities. If you take a look at uh, similar situations, judge will say, though, when this matter, when it, this issue is becomes uh, an issue in communities, typically the, it'll end up before a judge, a judge will uh, issue a restraining order, and at some point the judge will make a decision and basically say to both parties, get back to the negotiating table, it becomes a matter of a per uh, hearing, and the process usually is resolved through, through that kind of a negotiation process. And that's where we were at at the beginning of this whole process is uh, at the table with the union starting their negotiations. So I'm not a spokesman for the union. I'm not a, uh, taking the side of any other candidate. I'm just trying to speak about the facts as they relate to that issue. I believe the potential is there for this to cost more money in the end. And it was an irresponsible decision to make, given the fact that they didn't put any money in the budget to pay for overtime that's now being racked up. So that makes our financial situation even worse.